Pretty spectacular, eh? It's a flashlight actually shining through a glass of distilled water, and look at the light that's coming through over here. Now, if we take this glass of water and replace it with another glass that's got some dirt in it, <laughs> we can see that the amount of light that passes through is cut down markedly, and most of that light is being reflected now off of molecules in solution coming out the sides, more light actually falling onto the backdrop. That's called the Tyndall effect, and it deals with colligative properties of molecules, or how the size of molecules in solution determines various properties now of that solution. To understand what boiling point elevation and freezing point depression actually means, you got to understand vapor pressure first, or vapor pressure of solvents and solutions. Okay, here's what this is all about. We have a solvent inside of a beaker. Nice beaker, huh? Okay, and we've got a bunch of, well these are just solvent molecules in here, that they're really big, okay? Now, the solvent molecules are really big. And here's what you know, that if you have water and you put it in a beaker or a glass or whatever, uh, leave it over time and it's going to evaporate and take off out of there, okay? Put a lid on top of it and you will get water evaporating but hits the top of the lid, recondenses and forms a liquid again. And so, what do we get when we have the rate of evaporation equaling the rate of condensation? You know that that's equilibrium. Okay, so. What we have here is a vapor pressure that's achieved because this is, these are vapor particles here, and let's just say five of them evaporated, although that's going to be a certain pressure. Uh, that pressure in here is called the equilibrium vapor pressure for that solvent, and it changes with uh, changing temperature. So if you added, uh, uh, increase the temperature here, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get a higher vapor pressure up here. Make sense? Hope so. Now look at this. What if we add a bunch of black solute molecules, bad solute molecules, into the solvent to make a solution? Okay, what is that actually going to do to the vapor pressure up here? Well, believe it or not, what really happens is that solute molecules just get in the way of the solvent trying to evaporate. So, because of that interference, it's a colligative property coming together of solutions, and the interference there causes there to be a lower vapor pressure now, even at the same temperature, than the solvent had before. Now it's only got, say, three molecules evaporated into that space. The vapor pressure goes lower because you added the solute. Now, look at this. What if this was actually the boiling point? So to get to the boiling point, you have to have a vapor pressure of five molecules up here. Well, all of a sudden, by adding the solute in here, now to get the five up here to achieve that that vapor pressure that we need to get to the boiling point, well, the temperature has to go up. And so, if this is boiling at 100 and this is water, by putting a solute in, you increase the boiling point. So anytime you add a solute into water, the boiling point goes up. Now, conversely, if you have water and you put like salt into it, you know that the freezing point goes lower, and that's how we keep the roads in Alberta wet in between temperatures of zero and about minus 12 degrees during the winter time because we don't want to drive on ice the salt will turn it into a liquid. Why? Because the salt molecules interfere with water trying to freeze together to form a solid. They get in the way. So water stays as a liquid longer in terms of time. So what do we get there? The freezing point has to actually get lower before water can then freeze around that solute. And so that's Freezing point depression. Cool. Well, of course, we've got to be able to then calculate that new boiling point temperature. So here's that question and the way to do it. The formula is delta T equals IMK, where in this case the K is a constant. It's called the molal boiling point elevation constant for water because we are dissolving into water in this case, sodium chloride into water. So the KB has to be for water, it's for the solvent. So you look that up in a chart and that has to be given to you. The I value is the number of particles that the compound dissociates into. Now stay with me. Molecular compounds don't dissociate, don't break down to ions. So anytime you have a molecular substance 
trying to elevate or, or lower the freezing or boiling point of water, elevate the boiling point and lower the freezing point, the I value is going to be 1 for molecular substances. But it's going to be how many ions the ionic compound dissociates into. So NaCl dissociates into two ions, Na positive and Cl negative. By the way, if it's MgCl2, there would be three ions, one Mg and two Cls, right? Okay. But there's also a correction factor because sometimes in solution, the Na positive and the Cl negative don't totally separate, but there's ion pairing that occurs. So the I value needs a correction called the Van't Hoff correction. So for sodium chloride, the correction is actually, it's supposed to be an I value of 2, but it's really about 1.9 because some of the ions sort of stick together. All of this would be told to you in a question. So you've got your I value of 1.9 in this question. What's the molality? That's where molality comes in so importantly. What, what the heck do we ever need a molality for? For this. So here's the moles of the NaCl divided by the kilograms of the solvent because I told you it was in 100 grams of water. Here's the molal boiling point elevation constant here for water. When you punch all that in, you get a delta T of 1.7 degrees Celsius because that's the only unit that's left when all the cancellation takes place. What is that? That's the change in the boiling point. What's the real boiling point of the water now? When you put in salt or sodium chloride, 10 grams of it into 100 grams, you're going to get a boiling point elevation that goes to 101 because you have to add that, it's an elevation, to the 100 degrees Celsius.